Hey there, Philip here. Today I want to talk about the elephant in the room, so to speak, and that is to say, are video games bad for you or not? Because I'm working on one, I've released one, I should probably be clear about whether I'm doing something that's terrible to the society and to kids out there, or if it's okay, or if it's actually beneficial, right? So I think this is a very polarized debate. On one hand, you have people who are like, oh, every, apart from very small number of exceptions, all video games are terrible, right? They, like, you're sitting, you're uh, staring at the screen, it's completely divorced from reality, you have all these people who are um, getting addicted to gaming, it makes people less social, uh, you know, all, all that stuff. So that, that's on one side. On the other side, I think something that a lot of people who are maybe watching this channel kind of fall closer to the other side of the polarized debate, that's when people are like, well, no, actually, games are great for you. There's, you know, if there are some problems, they are only exceptions. Um, the, the fact that uh, someone is addicted to games or they, you know, kind of lose many, many hours uh, every day on games is uh, because they are prone to addiction. So if there wasn't a game, then they would be addicted to something else, probably something worse, right? That, that kind of stuff. So, so these are like the two parts that are completely opposite. And um, so where do I stand on that? And how do you, yeah, how, how do you resolve the two opposites, right? So th this is something that it might look like I'm just pulling out of my head, but I just realized I spent 20 years now um, thinking about this and actually my first, I think my first student research when I moved from a technical university to journalism, my first research project that I did was about violence in video games and if they're bad or good for you. And even then, of course, the the debate was very polarized. And at the time, uh, because I was a gamer, of course, I was on that side of like, at first, when I started the research, I was like, of course, games are just fine. You know, I don't see any problems with them. And then on at the end of the research, I was like, okay, both sides have a point, right? So, so first, um, let's talk about this side and let's try to uh, uh, put it into real reality a little bit, right? So the side that says like games are clearly bad. Um, so there is research. I think I'll, I'll uh, I have the link, so I'll put them in the description. There, there is research that tells us that games are actually, you know, if you play games, you uh, you're improving your IQ because you're forced to make decisions really quickly, and there's a very fast feedback loop, right? Um, there's I mean the the studies don't tell you that they just tell you. By the way, we we looked at kids who played games versus kids that didn't play games. There was a control group. There's like there's a lot of research on that, uh, and yes, games will make you smarter. They will make you. Uh, they will teach you how to think, right? So that, there's that. There's also research that I will also put there about things like uh, pro-social behavior, like like when people or kids play games, they will be more altruistic afterwards than if they don't. There's definitely a lot of research that shows how if you are making, if you are if you are um, comparing video game playing versus something like, um, you know, watching TV or even worse, watching internet television or like YouTube stuff, then games are definitely better than than just watching, um, you know, uh, TV. So, so that, that, that's like, there's definitely research on that. On the other side of the spectrum, there's also research about all the like bad things that happen to to people, kids especially, but like generally, you know, games are addic addictive. They are. It's not like 
if there weren't games, uh, there would be something else. Because games are so easy to reach. It's not like, oh, I can't play a game, so I'll use heroin. No, <laughs> it's it's not that simple, okay? So they are addictive. They, are, uh, they, they can, in excess, they can um, wreak havoc on your social life, on your studies, everything. There are, there are good, um, you know, psychological guides on how to, if you're, a, for example, a parent or someone who, uh, like a friend to someone who has been uh, afflicted by games, uh, how, to, how to solve this. And it doesn't need to be the extremes, right? It doesn't need to be someone who plays every day for 10 hours, but it could be just like people who, uh, who have a hard time going out um, I mean, they, they, they are. They would normally be kind of forced to um, have less anxiety around people and to be able to communicate and to have other hobbies. But because games are so easy, um, then they will choose the easy path. People will always choose the easy path if, like, on average, right? So, so yeah. So, so these are the two extremes. And they both have both valid points and, and invalid points. How do you resolve the two is that you realize, okay, so the industry is, is going in the direction of, of the bad, to be honest, I think. Like, on average, games are getting more and more addictive. Like, the, there are actual psychologists employed in game studios that know what what works for kids and adults to make them engage more with the game and to make them play more right and of course also spend more so you are against if you're like a 15 year old or nine year old or five year old kid you are against trained psychologists and against like a whole industry knowledge about how to make you hooked and how to make you play even though you're probably not getting a lot out of it right there's the other thing where where people are like well but if you play you get these skills right you just told us philip that it makes your iq go up so how can that be bad well yes again in moderation it will but I think, I, I don't know, but I have uh, actual people, not around me, but that, that I know of, that would spend, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 hours into one single game. Let's say like Counter-Strike, right? So, so they have 2,000 hours in Counter-Strike, which of course makes them really good. They learn Counter-Strike really good. But at this point... <clears throat> That that knowledge and and the, the the kind of the training that they have in Counter Strike is not translatable to normal life. I mean, at you know the first I don't know ten hours are probably pretty trans transferable. You know, you're talking about things like uh, uh, teamwork and and quick reaction times and uh, quick decisions. But after two thousand hours, it's like body hopping in in this map and how do i really quick scope or whatever i don't know the terminology but but you, you know what i mean like like at that point it's such a specialized knowledge that it's really only good for that particular game and then like and you're spending so so much time like you no know, 2000 hours they say that after 10000 hours of doing something uh you you get to be the elite in that particular um, thing, right? So, like, if if you spend two thousand hours, I don't know, like studying something cool, <laughs> or uh, you know, playing the piano, you would be amazing. But no, you're instead, yeah. This, this is, I guess, you could say, well, what's the difference? But yeah, I see a difference between being really, really good at piano and being really, really good at Counter-Strike. Anyway, so, so uh, there's definitely this, right? And 
uh, I just want to address the kind of the cynicism that comes sometimes come with this. I was talking to a person who works at a studio that makes games for little girls, okay? Um, and or like little girls, like teenage tween girls, right? And this studio, they know they, they make a million dollars a day, okay? And they know that, for example, they have a game that provides on mobile phones that provides two hours of um, experience of, of entertainment for the kid. And for most kids, it's free. But for some kids, some kids like like spend a hundred hours. I mean, a hundred hours, a hundred dollars for two hours of entertainment. Something that will they would obviously not do normally. You know, like if someone said up front, hey, are you going to spend a hundred dollars here for for this? Um, that they, they would not do it, right? And that, that's an extreme. But like th there are there are just like they they make this amount of money from girls who are kind of hooked into their game and who uh, spend more money than they would normally do. It doesn't need to be hundred dollars, but it could be like even just ten dollars for two hours of entertainment. If it's not like a, I don't know, an open air concert, I don't, I don't think that's what what a, a girl would do normally, right? And so, so they they know this, and when I talk to this guy, he's like, well, I don't, I don't kind of don't see why you know everyone's you know, <laughs> like like he's he's just he's just cynical about it, where it's like, well, it's just a job, you know, and I just hate this. I. I know that cynicism is part of internet culture. I know it's something that I guess is leaking to the outside world and it's very easy to to be cynical. But I just hate this. Just if you do something like this, own it. Like you are actually abusing in in a way, you know, your uh power over kids. So own it and don't be like, you know, where are we going with, like, where are we coming as a society? If it's not only okay, but almost uh, assumed that everyone's going to be just like, yeah, I, I don't really care. It's money. You know, just hate this. Okay. Anyway, um, sorry about this, but I, I had to, um, anyway, so, so the, kind of the resolution of all this in my head is, all right, there are market forces that are definitely um, moving or have been moving the games industry in the direction of just like being um, not good for, especially not for kids, right? And uh, that's because it's much easier to make money if you are using all these kind of... Uh, bad faith, uh, dark patterns. Actually, there is, uh, there is a, a website, sorry, game dark patterns, I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game dark patterns. I'm trying something, uh, that has nothing to do with it. This, but or anyway, so Dark Patterns is is looks terrible the website, but it lists all the patterns like playing by appointment, grinding, which sometimes can be okay, but uh, it always tells you like, okay, so how do I recognize a playing by appointment? Right, there are actual examples here. I didn't see that, you know, um, and how does that hook into your brain. Pay to win, artificial scarcity, illusion of control, badges, and so on and so forth. There are more there are more and more and of course, you know, if you look at more social dark patterns, there will be things like, you know, friend spam, impersonation, fear of missing out, all, all these things. Again, these are not necessarily just bad like, you know, if you see them in a game, uh, immediately that game is terrible, but uh, or you know, they're sometimes part of life. Uh, you know, social obligation, but they can be used as constructs to make your game more addictive and more make more money, 
right? And so that's where the uh, industry has been going towards. I'm going to show something else now. Uh, okay. All right. La, 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 la. So, yeah. What was I saying? Right. So, so it's... Uh, uh, there are patterns that have been recognized that are used in this uh, respect and that are just not cool, in my, op in my opinion. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, and if, you, if those patterns make money, the industry will make money. Uh, and th now, nowadays, there is kind of like the pendulum is hopefully moving in the other direction, or at least it's not moving anymore to, the, to that direction. And that's because there are parents who are like, you know, I have a kid and I see them just doing stupid stuff with, you know, just like spending so much time uh, and sometimes money with this thing that doesn't give him anything anymore, right? And uh, so we have people, we have parental controls and so on and so forth, but sometimes that's not enough because every kid can somehow get around them. Um, and so there is probably going to be something like government control or government regulation of this, because to be honest, this, this is similar to casinos and casinos are regulated in most places in the world. So, you know, like, like it's, it, it's a thing. Um, it's, it's not as, Clear cut as the people on this side will try to uh, imagine or yeah say. So, so that that's the kind of like that's the bad right. The normal the, the games that are most played right now are unfortunately very much about not just entertainment and not just like making the lives of uh, their customers nicer and easier but they're also about hooking these people and making them play more than they would normally do just because there are some dark patterns that keep them engaged, right? <clears throat> On the other hand, games as a medium is definitely um, like powerful and it, it is possible to use games as something that's good for people, not just kids, but everyone, you know, it can be great entertainment. It can greatly uh, help with your understanding of some things, uh, especially complex systems. And uh, and the, the, the world is full of complex systems and they can be, uh, they can literally just be educational, right? Like, uh, but, but I don't want to go there. So that's that's where I stand. That's that's what I think is happening right now. Um, in the future, maybe the industry is going to be regulated, or maybe it will swing back to normal uh, because they will have to kind of. But uh, so far, uh, it, it doesn't look like that. And but there are games definitely that already exist that that are not bad and that are actually good. And so where is my role in all of this? How am I living with myself working in gaming? Well, my previous game, games, uh, Nice of San Francisco, is a game that that is, you have to pay up front. Uh, it's on mobile, but there are no ads, nothing. I don't have any motivation to keep you engaged for more than you would like to. And it's over in something like 90 minutes and it's all reading. Right, so hopefully you you see that. Oh, okay, well, yeah, it's not with it's uh, breaking from the theme of like trying to get you hooked. Um, my next game, uh, giant robot game, is going to be probably it's going to be for um, desktop, but it is not. It's definitely not meant to spend you know make you spend more time with it than you would normally want to it's kind of old school in that way i, I hate how you you say old school about 
just fair, <laughs> fair business practices. Fair business practices hopefully aren't old school. They're just fair business practices. Anyway, so they, yeah, it's it's kind of old school in that uh, there is uh, there are no like oh uh, today we have this great thing and if you play it you know please play our game <laughs> or whatever. No, it's just like if you want to play the game, play the game. If not, go you know touch this grass or whatever. So that, that's one. And the, the other thing is that uh, I'm trying to bake into the game uh, some understanding about um, just technical aspects of computers that are normally not t taught. Uh, uh, and so I that would be another whole video. But, but I have always been a proponent of if you want to teach people something and you're not literally their teacher, um, try to do it in a way that's entertaining for them. And then if they want to dig in and, and teach themselves, then give them the opportunity, but don't shove it into their throats, right? Down their throats. So that's, that's my position. All right. So yes, games are terrible. <laughs> the games are bad for you in general like the games that are most played unfortunately i think are uh, unless you can play them in moderation and you're fair to yourself and you're like yeah okay uh, i just played i don't know four hours of something did i really mean to do that should i have been doing something more interesting and productive and social and so on if yes then uh it's not your fault. It's it's you're against trained professional with a lot of experience. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.